It is now the law in China that organs used for medical transplants cannot be sourced from executed prisoners. So where do the organs come from? The demands are huge. The waiting lists seem endless. The normal process in other countries is that ordinary people affirm legally that when they die, they will their organs to be used as transplants. The problem in China is that traditional culture expects that a person's body should always remain intact without dismemberment, thus discouraging organ donations. How then is China now addressing this problem of organ donations? Moreover, how to decide who ranks higher and receives organs faster? Do rich people get priority? People with special relationships? We investigate how China is developing a new approach to organ transplants, how Chinese people are being encouraged to donate organs, and how a fair system of organ allocations is being developed. The story of organ transplantation in China brings us closer to China. This is Jiangmen City in Guangdong province. Surgeon Li Peng is on his way to the intensive care unit in People's Hospital. He's only one of the experts summoned to determine if a patient is suitable to make an organ donation. We have recorded total brain failure. Results from ultrasound scan, EEG and EMG show a total loss of brain function. As an organ donation coordinator, Li Pon knows he has the difficult responsibility to ask the patient's relatives if they can authorize a donation. In China, as organ transplantation began in the 1980s, it took on a special characteristic. In 1984, China enacted the rules concerning the utilization of corpses or organs from corpses of executed prisoners. The rules provided that if no one claimed the body, corpses or organs of executed prisoners could be utilized, if the executed prisoner volunteered to have his corpse so used, or if the family consented. The act drew much criticism around the world. Many Chinese doctors were quite angry with the unfriendly policies towards them in the international community. To take myself as an example, I think I did quite a lot of work in liver transplantation, renal transplantation, and etc. I made some achievements at least in certain ways. However, I don't have any say in the international arena. We were not even allowed membership in international transplantation associations or to publish papers in international journals on organ transplant. In 2007, the Chinese government issued its first regulation on human organ transplants. The regulation stipulates that human organ transplants should respect the principle of voluntary and free donation. But changing an established system with various interest groups was no easy task. As a surgeon, uh, what have been some of the examples of, of cases that interrelate with this problem for uh, uh, where the organs are sourced and the, and the deep um, um, conflict that you had regarding s sourcing from executed prisoners? Well, from the very beginning, we relied on sourcing from executed prisoners in China for organ transplants. With more than 20 years of development, the system was basically in shape. We were already used to it and quite familiar with the procedures. And the organs were generally of good quality. Therefore, to suddenly cut off such a source caught us in a dilemma. Actually, Western countries used organs from prisoners as well. America once did it, and Singapore today still used this source. Then why should we, Chinese, say no to them? 
To apply the traditional Chinese way of thinking, the prisoners committed sins in their life. If we let them donate their organs, we are in a sense offering salvation. They can atone for their crime with that opportunity. So these practices are not in conflict with the Chinese culture at all. But then what is the problem? With organs from prisoners, the development of civilian donation system will be hampered. Actually, the 40 years of development in organ transplant just told us the very story. As long as we continue relying on prisoners for sourcing, it would be hard for the system of donation to fully develop. With two options, one easy, the other tough, everyone will opt for the easier one. This is the natural way of thinking. So if we do not stop sourcing from prisoners at the moment, establishing the donation system will only be put off further and further. Liu Xiuqin is the General Secretary of the Organ Transplantation Development Foundation. The organization was set up in 1995 to promote organ transplants in China. But due to existing policies, it had made little progress. At that critical moment, Liu came on board. What was the problem in 2012, 2013 that required you to move from Wuhan to Beijing and required uh, Dr. Wang Jiefu to become the new chairman? Our foundation has been established for quite some time, about 20 years now. 18 years have passed since we took over it in 1995. But at the beginning, we didn't have the system of civilian donation in place, so work at the foundation was quite tough. There were a lot of difficulties to maintain our work. As we tried to change the legal person, domicile, organization code, we realized that the former institution has greatly affected the foundation in its first three years of operation. Besides, our former colleagues had left us almost no registered capital. The Ministry of Civil Affairs requires that for establishing and operating a foundation, there should be at least 8 million yuan of registered capital on the books. But when we took over the foundation, there was merely 1,000 yuan. In 2013, we had an election after we moved the foundation from Wuhan to Beijing. Minister Huang began to serve as our legal person and president. In order to change the status quo at the time, Minister Huang gave us an order asking us to completely get ourselves away from the past of the foundation. Dr. Huang Jiefu is a renowned liver surgeon, former vice minister of health and member of the National Committee of the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference. But he's perhaps best known as China's organ transplant visionary and president of the China Organ Transplant Development Foundation, a social organization affiliated with the National Health and Family Planning Commission. The foundation's mission is to promote the development of organ transplantation in China, enhancing research and assuring highest legal and ethical standards. Breaking away from the old foundation turned out to be one of the many bold decisions Dr. Huang Jiefu made. In 2005, at the World Health Organization meeting in the Philippines, Dr. Huang, then Vice Minister of Health, made a controversial and courageous acknowledgement. China used organs from executed prisoners. In December 2014, Huang announced that starting in January 2015, China will ban the use of prisoner organs. Our problem, major problem, is the leakage of uh, national organ civilian donation systems. We just rely on the organs from the executed prisoners. We call the Achilles heel of the Chinese organ transplantation systems. While trying to put a stop to the old immoral sourcing of organ, Huan was also searching for new ways to meet China's vast demand for organs. And that's when his wife intersected with Wang Haibo. What does people think about China's organ location? I will introduce my friend, Joy. He was my classmate at a school, public health at Harvard. In the graduation ceremony, Joy gave me a big hug and then introduced me to his mom. Mom, and this is my good friend, Haibo, and he decided where organ goes in China. If we need organ, can go to him. So I have to slap him in his back, said, Joy, what you said is exactly what we have been working so hard 
during the last several years to fight against. I think my past uh, intervened with Jeff's past in 2004. Uh, I received a research project assignment from my boss, uh, Professor S.T. Fan, uh, who is a very famous uh, living donor liver transplant surgeon in the world. And I remember that night I picked up the phone and called Jeff and said, you know, I have this assignment to develop the um, data science research project for China. And Jeff said, you know what, Hebel? I'm the initiator of this project. <laughs> In 2013, the Chinese government set up the organ transplant response system. The system is designed to encourage organ donations and to allocate organs fairly and consistently, so that everyone in need has an equal right to transplants. Whenever an organ is donated, the coordinator, like Li Peng, fills out a comprehensive information forum online in the organ transplant response system. The system automatically allocates the organ to its suitable recipient. Hi, Bob. The organ transplant system that you're setting up, um, how do, what, what are the principles behind it in terms of the allocation? I'm sure there are some universal principles in terms of age or health. Uh, and then uh, are, are there Chinese characteristics that you build into the system as well? The organ allocation, we um, we developed uh, based on the, uh, the requirement from regulation on human organ transplantation announced by the State Council in 2007, which said the ranking of the patient, the allocation of the organ, only based on the medical needs of the patient. That's the only sentence in the regulation uh, related to organ allocation. But the how could you define the medical needs? There are very well matured standards in the international society. For example, the, li the liver transplantation based on the MERD system. MERD is the med medical model uh, adopted by international society, which can accurately predict the risk of death for a person within three months without transplantation. Uh, and then uh, are, are there Chinese characteristics that you build into the system as well? Uh, yes, there are because the organ donation, uh, deceased organ donation of any country based on the concept of death. Um, but the death itself is not only a technical term or technical process. The the process of death is the process of the culture and society issue, besides the technical definition of the death. So there are many Chinese unique situations happen during the process of organ donation. Internationally, organ donation policies vary. There are currently two main methods of determining voluntary consent, opt-out and opt-in. Opt-out, or presumed consent, means that anyone who has not refused is automatically a donor. Opt-in means that only those who have given explicit consent are donors. China currently adopts the opt-in system. But even those who have given explicit consent, sometimes they still can't be donors. In China, we hope the, we have the uh, concern from the donor itself before their death, but also we need family consent on organ donation. And if the family said no, even the individuals said yes before death, the, the organ donation cannot proceed. And that deeply rooted from the Chinese tradition on the respect on the value of the family. The family value is the core of Chinese society. And not only that, in the practical issue, in the practical situation, um, many um, families uh, make decision not only by the direct king uh, required by the law, but also 
by many remote relatives, and even by the members of the community, such like village. And so, and we cannot say it's wrong, although it's not written by the law that you know, we need to get consent from them. But we must respect this culture. We must respect that because after all, the organ transplantation is for the purpose of saving the living person. As a doctor and as a scientist, uh, particularly in public health, uh, and are committed to build the best technical, moral, scientific uh, system for China, um, when did you first realize that you were dealing with something much bigger than organ transplants or even than medicine or even science? When did that realization hit you? Uh, when we start to build organ allocation system. And when we start to build this system that allocates the most scarce resource in the world, yeah. the organs, yeah. which equal to lives. That we are not allocating organs, we are allocating lives. Yeah. Yeah. So you can understand the struggle when people are facing the death. And it's understandable that a patient family will utilize all their resource, the, everything, the social connection, the power, the money, try to survive. Uh, and then we realize it's a very difficult task. And I have been warned by people outside China and inside China that you cannot succeed in China. The system you are building is contradictory to the society system of China. And you, there's no way you can succeed for the public trust on the organ donation program in China. Uh, but uh, then during this process, uh, I realized that the most difficult part is not technical, is not academic. And the most difficult part is we encounter something larger than that, something that larger than transplantation, larger than medical service, is very deep, deeply rooted in the problem of Chinese society, cannot be overcome by scientific research. <laughs> and we are actually, many transplant surgeons told me that we are lucky to have Jie Fu in this field, in his capacity, in his experience, not only from professional career, but also from political career to make this happen, to help the organ transplantation in China to move today's position.很多患者因为器官衰竭而失去了生命这里边有些是家里的顶梁柱让我觉得最有感触最难过的地方不是他们拒绝我的时候我说如果爸爸妈妈救不了你了我说你会捐献器官吗然后孩子当时是无法说话但是我就看了一眼从他的眼角就流出了一行泪其实孩子心里头也是愿意去帮助其他人我会把这个 
，把我所有健康的喜欢捐献出来，我们再把这个爱传递下去。Every time, Li Peng will explain to the patients how many organs are used for transplantation, where each organ goes. This is the result of his heart examination from this morning. It's hard to tell if it is suitable for organ transplantation. It is estimated that more than 10,000 organs, a record high, will have been transplanted in the whole year of 2015. What has been the reaction of the international community, which had so condemned China for its uh, immoral and unethical practices with uh, sourcing organs from executed prisoners? Uh, does the international community believe China more now? Does it believe China's data? What has been the, uh, the reaction? I think it was an evolutionary process, but actually, there was a group of people in the international community that trusted us from the start. They believed that we would finally have our civilian donation system in place. I want to particularly point out Francis L. Damanico, a very well-known professor present at the 2004 conference, who is actually former president of the TTS, and is now serving as executive director of the Declaration of Istanbul Custodian Group. Eight of his fellow professors, some renowned Western professors included, together wrote President Xi Jinping an open letter, which, if my memory serves me right, is titled China's Fight Against Corruption in Organ Transplantation. They're actually saying the international community has come to recognize China's work in civilian donation development. It is particularly so after the third plenum of the 18th CPC Central Committee, during which President Xi called for the rule of law with the following legal development in rolling out new amendments. They also applauded the anti-corruption campaign, as well as many other efforts of Chinese leaders headed by President Xi by showing the laudatory comments from the international community. In the letter, they first gave a brief introduction to the general scenario and then started to talk about corruption issues in China's organ transplantation system. They listed a lot of problems, like the black market for the purchase and sale of organs, unfair distribution, and various other potential problems that are hazardous to international development. Then last December, Minister Huang, together with eight other Chinese professors, gave our reply titled Rule of Law, Promoting Reform in China's Organ Transplantation, in which it specifically points out that post-mortem civilian donation will become a major source for China's organ transplant recipients. The international community, Professor Dalmanico and many others, are all very happy with our response. In this uh, August, we have the... And the OPO Alliance and, uh, and uh, held in Guangzhou. And then WHO and uh, officials, Jose is uh, official in WHO in charge of organ transplantations. Mm -hmm. Also TTS President uh, Phillips is from Australia. Mm -hmm. Jeremy is a former chairman of the TTS. Also the chairman of the DICG Professor Demonicus, also over and, uh, 20 leaders from the international transplant societies came to China. Mm. So saying is believing. Yeah, okay. And before the conference, they visited many centers, transplant centers. They think the remarkable changes happen in China. From the Jose is WHO, so it's remarkable changes unbelievable changes, historical changes happen in China in terms of organ transplant. So th th this are reactions of the whole the international societies. Mm. So I showed the letter, there's three famous leaders. Why I don't want to mention the name, they always criticize China in the international uh, journals. Mm. So now he got the congratulations from him. <laughs>
Dr. Wang, please share your feelings when you first heard that uh, you were nominated and then won the, the Gusi Peace Prize for your work, extraordinary work, in uh, transforming the whole process of organ uh, sourcing for transplants. I'm very excited. <laughs> uh, but however, I realize and, uh, this award is, is not a recognition of my personal and the achievement, but the progress of uh, our countries. Also, is the praise of the collective. As you know, and the uh, strong support of the high leadership is the guarantee for the success of the organ transplantation reform. So I feel I'm very lucky and very happy and also grateful uh, living in this great era. And uh, so I can uh, fulfill my dream, yeah. But this uh, doesn't hide the fact that you faced uh, enormous challenges during this whole period of time. Uh, how did you personally feel during the, the more than decade that you had to fight against uh, very powerful interest groups and, and the inertia of a system that was in place that everybody, literally everybody supported except you, overtly? I talked about the 2005, so I got support from the, our and the Hu Jintao and the Wen Jiabao. So this critical time, I got support from the, our President Xi Jinping and the Premier Li Keqiang. Okay. So that's why I'm very confident. Because these things, and Robert, you know, you know in my life, and I think there is a feeling, and uh, so a skill I had uh, fulfilled and, uh, and the, my, uh, as a surgeon to save in life, uh, invoking the conflict. Because of the, uh, one is the skill you had to fulfill your, your life pursuit and the means of the harvest the organs. <laughs> so there's a conscience, conscience and the human dignity. Mm. So encourage me to do that. Uh, definitely there's a something and uh, somebody uh, behind that. China's elimination of using organs from executed prisoners for transplants is a historic reform, a great victory for social morality and human rights. But what about those sick people in desperate need of transplants? To them, it's a matter of life and death. That's why China has begun a campaign to educate citizens on the humanitarian and social benefits of willing their organs to be used as transplants. What's stressed is that Chinese traditions believe that it's a moral responsibility to save people's lives, and that after death anyway, the body has no importance. As for allocating organs fairly, doctors Huang Jiafu and Wang Haibo are developing China's organ transplant response system based on best international practices and tailored to fit China's culture and society. The new system promises to optimize the saving of lives and to do so with fairness and transparency. To know Dr. Huang Jiafu and Dr. Wang Haibo, to hear their courageous, life-affirming story is to be closer to China.